case of Robert Fowler, the mechanic, for the KILLING of Kenise Jackson, a 20-year-old accountant from Independent City, Portmore. You are watching What's What Jamaica News TV. We will bring you the latest news. Stay tuned. are the details remembering what the 52 year old mechanic Robert Fowler did to Canise Jackson the 20 year old accountant from Manchester Avenue Independent City Portmore it sends shiver to my spine I know I'm reporting the news and I should not get emotional but this hits close to my my heart as a person who has also grown up in Portmore, Manchester Avenue, the same street, just a few doors from Canise. I had never met Canise, but had close connections to her and knew of her since she was born. Canise was the sole child of her mother. She was not only her child, but her best friend. Canise was a child who goes to work, comes home. She didn't even go to the store. Once she's home, she stays in. A beautiful girl with big ambitions of one day becoming a lawyer. And all her ambition was cut down by this man, 50-year-old man, Fowler. In, in a statement in court, a niece of Chambers said, In all honesty, Eunice, which is the mother of Canice, despite Mr. Fowler, the dog killer, the dog, who K-I-L-L-E-D, her daughter, and does not want to see him in court or hear anything from him. Jackson's mother, who is presently in the United States visiting family, has not set departure date for Jamaica, claims her niece because she can't deal with the situation right now. And the court was informed. She has told me that she has not been able to visit Kani's graveside since the funeral because she has nightmares to this day due to the graphic nature and state of decomposing of her daughter's body and how it was found and she cannot get it out of her mind. She also stated that she was, she's unable to look at Kani's picture without ver becoming very depressed and emotional. All this woman had was her daughter. She lived for her daughter. She breathed for her daughter. And believe me, from my understanding, I don't know how she has coped over these past two years. The niece claimed that Chambers, the mother, had difficulty falling asleep and had several sleepless nights. She has lost a lot of weight because of the MURDR following the death of her daughter. And since Canis was Eunice's only child, and the two of them were very close, the MURDER has robbed Eunice of all of her mental, emotional, and physical resources. Due to Canis's absence from her home, home following her DATH, Eunice has been forced to spend the majority of her time abroad according to the evidence presented in court. She claimed that even as she struggles with sorrow over having arranged to visit her daughter for lunch on the day she vanished and having wished to share something with her, Chambers had mentioned having flashbacks.
Denise claims that Chambers, who is the mother, has been feeling guilty about the failed lunch date because she was the one who made it happen. Comparable plans for the Tuesday prior were postponed due to job obligations. In a statement, Jackson's absentee father, Roy, claimed that his daughter passing was the worst thing that could have happened to any parent. It has had a significant impact on me, he said, and I now experience daily misery and agony. Occasionally, I have nightmares about my daughter's passing. It has occasionally caused me to experience extreme emotion. And I have shed many tears in front of my wife and sons as well as in public whenever I speak with friends, he said. And this is the man's only daughter also. Such beautiful girl, such promising girl. Jackson's stepmother said in her statement that while the two-year delay in resolution may mean that it does not have the same degree of impact, this did not change the nature of the crime in the sense of anger that it had initially. You know, a rope is a rope, she said. This was not an accidental D-E-A-T-H, she said adding that the act was one of the senseless savagery and brutality and caused the family untold everlasting pain. If I, who, who is not related to them, every time I think of it by here, I feel this pain because I know somebody who is a member of my family who is very, 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 was very very closely connected to Canice and usually talk to me about Canice is a good girl, Canice is this, Canice is that, Canice is that, I have to get this for Canice, I have to get that for Canice. So it, it's, I just feel that as I mentioned before I had never met her because I am living in the United States. I had never met her but I've heard of her so many times that it's like somebody I knew personally. Jackson, an accounting clerk at Fowler, and Fowler, a mechanic, had met on a bus in 2020, according to a senior prosecutor summarizing the evidence. He claimed that Fowler frequently encountered Jackson while she awaited a bus to take her to work in Portmore. And that's, that's a fact. That's the story that I heard from the incident happened and occasionally picked her up, took her in his personal car to work. Eventually he claimed this became the standard. In Sierra at the bus stop, the work in the same era, he gave her a ride. For all intents and purposes, he appeared to be treating Canise with politeness. When she hadn't yet arrived at the bus stop when he was passing, he would occasionally even wait for her there. The court was informed. And she took it innocently. She took it innocently. According to the prosecutor, Fowler had not driven Jackson to work for two weeks before the adoption because he had to get to work earlier than usual. He claimed that on the tragic day, Jackson left her home about 7 a.m. and made her way to the bus stop, which was seen on closed circuit television. As this was shown to the, the world, her walking, it was on closed circuit. Somebody, um, somebody webcam, somebody camera picked her up. A vehicle that fixed it fit the description of Fowler apparently was nearby at the time according to a neighbor them saw his car. Fowler admitted that he had picked up Jackson on Passage Fort Drive in Portmore on the disputed day. 
He said that during the trip, they got into a fight. What fight can a 50-year-old man get into with a 20-year-old girl? About a promise he had made to her to give her money to buy something for her boyfriend's birthday three weeks earlier. He said that he broke his promise since things had been difficult for him and he was under pressure at work. But regardless of that, that's no excuse. He claimed that as the disagreement went on, he turned his car around and advised Canis to catch the bus to work. Then according to Fowler, he parked the car on the highway leading to Caymanas and got out of the seat. So when he got out of the seat, he just decided to do what he had to do with her. Then after that, he took the B.O.D.Y. inside to Forum Fishing Village, chained her H.A.N.D.S. and F.E.E.T. and D.U.M.P.E.D., the B.O.D.Y. inside a deserted structure. He returned to get the B.O.D.Y. around 7.30 that evening, put it in his car and drove to Dyke Road, where he D-U-M-P-E-D it in a ditch. Now, he snatched her handbag the next morning and D-U-M-P-E-D its content into a trash can at the market in Crossroads, St. Andrew. So now he's doing all these things since the morning he picked her up. And I remember, I remember clearly someone called me and told me that Canice was missing. Me personally picked up the phone and called me and told me Canice was missing. And I said to the person, let them wait until it's time when she would normally come home. But Jackson did not arrive at home that evening. Then somebody from her workplace called before that, if somebody from her workplace called in the day and said that she wasn't at work and she didn't call in. And the mother was very, very worried because she says that's unlike her daughter. Her daughter is a very responsible person. On March 26, her R-O-T-T-I-N-G-B-O-D-Y was F-O-U-N-D on the Dyke Road. The same day, Paula was detained at his place of employment after being identified as potential suspect by Jackson's mother. In a cautionary statement given in front of a lawyer, Paula admitted to S-T-R-A-N-G-L-I-N-G, the young woman. Paula's shoulders had scratch marks according to medical examination. According to a POSTMORTM study, Jackson's neck compression was the cause of her DEATH and BLUNT impact. INJURIES was evident on the BODY. A handbag containing Jackson's personal goods was discovered during the search of Fowler's house, along with a BLOODY. cloth, rope, and duct tape. A B-L-O-O-D-I-E-D piece of cardboard was also discovered in his car. What a monster! What a monster! Only an evil monster could have done something like this to a promising, beautiful, intelligent, whose mother has struggled as a single parent to send her to school, to train her up the right and proper way. And this is, this guy, this guy should not see the light. Guys, if you have watched this video so far, please make sure you subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, subscribe. 
comment, share, and hit that notification bell of the